Today's topic is equations of lines, and today's goal, hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to say, I can find the equations of lines in both y-intercept form and standard form. So we're going to review what is meant by the equations of lines in the first place in both y-intercept and standard form. Uh, the y-intercept form for the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. And when it's in y-intercept form, this m here represents the slope. B is where it crosses the y-axis, which is the y-intercept. Has to be in that form or you don't know what slope and y-intercept is. In standard form, it's a little bit neater package. It looks like ax plus by plus c equals zero. And a, b, and c are all integers, can't have any fractions. And a can't be negative, it's gotta be bigger than zero. Um, there's no real advantage to putting them in standard form, except that it's a much neater package. You don't have to worry about fractions or hanging negatives off the front that you might drop, things like that. Uh, but it is the y-intercept form of the line that gives us much, much more information. So we're going to learn about switching between the two forms to start with. And we're going to start by going from standard form to y-intercept form. Now, in this example, I have asked you to put 2x plus 4y minus 16 equals 0 into intercept form. Right now, it's in standard form. The key to putting anything into intercept form is to isolate the y, because in intercept form, the y is completely by itself. So, doing that, our step one is to add or subtract the y term on both sides. So, right now, I've got this plus 4y, and I'm going to subtract 4y on both sides of this equation. Once I subtract 4y on both sides of the equation, I get 2x, 4y's are gone, so minus 16 equals, and 0 minus 4y is just negative 4y. Now that I have the y on one side, now I need to get rid of that coefficient of y, that negative 4. It's multiplying, so to get rid of it, we need to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. Once I divide the right-hand side by negative 4, I now have y completely by itself. And then over here, I just need to simplify. 2 divided by negative 4 is negative 1 half, and of course, it has the x with it. And then negative 16 divided by negative 4 is positive 4. So now I have this in slope-intercept form. It doesn't matter that it's backwards. We could have the y first, or we can have at last. What really matters is that the y is completely by itself and I now know that the slope for this is negative one-half and the y-intercept is four. Moving right along we are going to do example number two going from y-intercept form to standard form. This one's not quite as straightforward as some of, as the last one. Uh, we have to follow the standard form rules. We have to make sure that we get rid of all fractions, we have to make sure that the number in front of x is positive, and we have to make sure that um, everything is on one side and zeros on the other. So our step one, we're going to multiply by a common denominator to clear fractions. So the common denominator here would be 12. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. When I multiply by 12 there, that gives me 12y on that side. When I multiply this term by 12, the 4 cancels into the 12. It goes into 12 three times. So now I have 3 times negative 3x. So that equals negative 9x. And lastly, I have to multiply this by 12 as well. And the 6 goes into 12 two times. So we just have 2 times 5 on that side, which of course is 10. Step 2 is to rearrange to get one side 0, but variables in the order of x, y, then the constant term. So the easiest way to do this is to get rid of this 12, because that's the only thing on that side. So I'm going to subtract 12y from that side. And if I subtract 12y from that side, I've got to subtract 12y from that side to preserve our balance. 
which means that this side is now 0, which is what I wanted. I wanted one side to be 0, and this other side is minus 9y minus 12y plus 10. Now the last thing that we had to be careful of here for step 3 is if the coefficient of the x term is not positive, we need to multiply by negative 1 to make it positive. So in this case, we do have a negative 9 in front of the x. If that was a positive 9, we'd be done. But since it's a negative 9, I have to multiply both sides by negative 1. And of course, the only thing negative 1 does is uh, switch the signs. So this actually will become 0 equals uh, 9x plus 12y minus 10. And now that equation is in standard form. Now we're going to figure out how we can find the equation of a line if I know a little bit of information about it. Uh, so for example one, it says use y equals mx plus b to find the y-intercept of a line that has a slope of 6 and passes through the point 1, 3. Uh, what is the equation of the line in standard form? So we want to get it uh, first in y-intercept form and then we'll rearrange it to standard form. So we want to use y equals mx plus b. If I was given slope and the y-intercept, my job would be really easy because I just have to plug in there, but I'm not. I'm given slope and I'm given a point. I'm given one value of x and one value of y that I know is on the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these values for x and y and sub it in for x and y and y equals mx plus b. So y is 3. Our m we were told was 6. x is 1 from here. And then plus b because b is what we don't know. We don't know where it crosses the y-axis. But we're about to find out. 3 equals 6 plus b, and then to get b completely by itself, I'm going to subtract 6 on both sides of the equation, and I get negative 3 equals b. So I now know that the equation is y equals 6x, because 6 is our slope, which is m, uh, minus 3, because we have m, and we found b. Now that's not in standard form, but it's very easy to get in standard form. I can subtract y off both sides, and once I subtract y off both sides, then this side is 0, and that equals 6x minus y minus 3 in standard form. Now I'm going to use a different formula that's going to put it in standard form a little bit quicker for us. Uh, we're going to use the slope point formula. Um, a slightly easier way to get the equation of a line, if we know slope and a point, is by using the slope point formula. If we know the slope m and a point x1, y1, then this equation holds true. We take y subtract y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. And this x1 and y1 is just any particular point on the line. And m, of course, is the slope. So, finding an equation using slope and a point. Find the equation of a line in standard form that passes through 1, 3 with a slope of 6 using the slope point formula. So we're going to use the slope point formula, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And I'm going to put in 6 for m. I'm going to put in 1 for x1 from here. And I'm going to put in 3 for y1 from here. So now my equation becomes y minus 3 equals 6 times x minus 1. Distributive law tells me that the 6 has to go through the brackets. So we have y minus 3 equals 6x minus 6. And now we just have to rearrange and get this into uh, standard <laughs> into the standard form. So I'm going to get this side equal to 0 by subtracting y and adding 3, which will be 0. On this side, if I subtract y, I just get 6 minus, 6x minus y, and if I add 3, it will combine with this negative 6 and give me negative 3. So now I've got the equation in standard form, and I only had to do it in a few lines 
um, rather than in a couple of different steps with slope y-intercept form. It becomes even quicker when we have fractions. So let's do one with fractions. Finding an equation using slope point, slope at a point, but the slope is a fraction. So find the equation of a line in standard form that passes through negative 2 comma 3 with a slope of 2 fifths using the slope point formula. So here's a slope point formula again. y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And here again is my m. Here is my x1, and here is my y1. So we do y minus y1, it will be y minus 3, equals 2 fifths x minus x1, that is minus minus 2, so that's going to change to a plus 2. Now the next thing I'm going to do is actually get rid of that 5. Uh, as a fraction because we know we can't have fractions so I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 5. Now those two 5's are going to cancel this 5 is going to go through those brackets and then this 2 is going to go through these brackets. So what we have here will be 5y minus 15 equals 2x plus 4. And then to rearrange, I need to subtract this 5y and add 15. So if I do that on this side, it's gone. On this side, if I subtract 5y, I get 2x minus 5y. And then I have to add this 15. So when I add 15 to 4, I get plus 19. And there's my equation in standard form very quickly in standard form using slope and a point formula. Next we're going to find the equation of a line using two points. Uh, find the equation of a line in standard form that passes through negative 3, 7, and 6, negative 2. Now we don't have a slope here, but hopefully you remember that we have a slope formula that says m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're going to find the slope first, and we should put some little thing in here that says finding slope so that I know what you're doing. Doop, doop, doop. And we're going to use these points to figure out the slope. So y2 minus y1 means I'm going to take negative 2 and subtract 7. Got to take the two y's and subtract them. So negative 2 subtract 7. Now to get x2 minus x1, that's these two things. So 6 subtract negative 3. And of course, when you subtract a negative, that changes to a positive. So what we have here is negative 9 over positive 9 gives us the nice slope that's just negative 1. Now we're going to use m equals negative 1. And one of these points, it doesn't matter which one, uh, in the slope point formula. So we're going to use m equals negative 1 and uh, I'm going to pick negative 3, 7 for no particular reason. They're both equally as nice and equally as nasty. So y minus y1 equals m x minus x1 and now my y1 is going to be this thing here. So y minus 7 equals m was negative 1, so I'm putting a negative 1 in for m, and then x minus, here's my x1, and if that's my x1, then when I subtract it, it's going to be x plus 3. Now I just have to expand and rearrange. So this negative 1 by distributive law is going to go through the brackets, so I have y minus 7 equals negative x minus 3, and now I'm going to subtract y and add 7 to make this side 0. So that side becomes 0. On this side, I have to subtract y and then add 7. And when I add 7 to the negative 3 here, I get a positive 4. Now, in standard form, we cannot have this situation here. I've got a negative in front of the x. So I'm going to get rid of that by multiplying through by negative 1. And of course, the 0 doesn't change because you can multiply 0 by anything and it's still 0. It's going to be x plus y minus 4 when you get through it all.